All right, so all of the video games that you play, whether it be a Facebook game or Call of Duty or whatever, uh, they are not difficult enough at all. Um, no, I'm, I'm serious. You should be playing more difficult games because difficult games create Fiero, which is the most important emotion that a game can create. Fiero is the emotion of triumphing over adversity. And if a game is too easy, then you will never feel that triumph when you win. And if a game is too easy, you know, you, you won't feel the Fiero. So you need the adversity, you need a lot of it. Uh, going back to our first talk today, we were talking about uh, how you, know, you should accept failure and that is not just true for kids, it's true for everybody. It's how we learn, trying something over and over again until you finally succeed and it, it feels so good. So I'm gonna talk about three kinds of games that are well regarded for being just tremendously difficult. And I encourage all of you to try them out. Uh, these three games are Roguelikes, Bullet Hell Shmups, and Nintendo Hard Platformers. Now, uh, these are all very strange names. Now, roguelikes are fairly simple looking games that are simple looking because they have uh, very complicated systems, like ludicrously complicated systems that interact in just very, you know, very small ways, but very com complicated ways. And you just find a few things here and there and just have to make do with what you find. Now when I say they're complicated, there's a game called Dwarf Fortress that is so complicated it doesn't have graphics because it can't be drawn. Um, this is a game where you, if you look at the things that he adds to the game in his change logs, they say things like added fluid dynamics information for egg yolks and egg whites, or um, <laughs> ghosts can no longer uh, maintain a hidden identity. Uh, just absolutely crazy. Uh, Dungeon Crawl, uh, which is very dark in this screen, uh, much more traditional kind of roguelike, along with the next one, Dungeons of Dreadmore, uh, are much more traditional. It's get to the bottom of the dungeon, receive the, the loot, and then get back out. Uh, but on either of those games, I have never gotten past level five of 20. So uh, just tremendously difficult, but a lot of fun. And Dungeons of Dreadmore is really hilarious. Um, bullet hell shmups, a shmup is short for shoot 'em up, and these are games that are uh, inspired by the old arcade games that were incredibly difficult as a way to kill you a lot so that you have to put more quarters in the machine. Um, and now you can see why they're called bullet hell. Uh, any one of those things will kill you in one hit. Uh, and it's very much about finding the right, just minuscule path that you have to navigate through while also being able to attack the enemies. Um, and <laughs> I'll just wait until the next slide. Um, <laughs> so again, it, it's not quite as bad as it looks because typically in these games, the actual area where you can be hit is one or two pixels, but it is still tremendously difficult. And I could not have just one screenshot from Toho Project. This is a series that has, I think, 23 games in it and just has a fanatical following and every game is like that the whole way through. It is complete insanity. Uh, Nintendo Hard is kind of a misleading name because when you think of Nintendo, you tend to think of really, you know, kid-friendly games like Mario, but this Nintendo is talking about the old NES system where you had games like Contra or Ninja Gaiden or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that really just do not mess around at all. So you have games like V, uh, the other five are silent, uh, that is <laughs> named after uh, all of the spikes in the game. <laughs> Uh, you have games like uh, Spelunky, which just came out a week ago, which uh, is, I think, very generous. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, it gives you four hit points. Uh, and then there are some games that I think the creator is just out to kill you. Um, not necessarily in the game, but just it, he, he will come to your house and murder you. Um, I have actually beaten this game, by the way, so I did get through that room. It, it took a while. And uh, so the thing is that these kinds of more difficult games are inspiring developers kind of across the board as they remember the fun that they had with these games when they were young. So we have games like Dark Souls and Dragon's Dogma that are about just a guy with a sword fighting giant mythical beasts or games like The Binding of Isaac or Rogue Legacy that take the concepts of roguelikes or bullet hell shmups and applying them to the frameworks of Legend of Zelda and Castlevania. Uh, and so I definitely encourage all of you to track down some of these more difficult games in which you fail a lot, 
but then when you finally succeed, it is one of the best feelings that you have ever felt. And if you want to try some tonight, I have a laptop with some of these games loaded on, so you can track me down afterward and give it a shot. Thank you.